One of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome to another episode of MCAT Bites. Today, we are diving into the fascinating world of optics and focusing on lenses. Lenses are an integral part in both physics and medicine, from microscopes and ophthalmology to imaging techniques. Understanding how lenses manipulate light to form images is crucial for the MCAT and your future medical career. So let's clear up the concepts of real and virtual image, as well as how different lenses behave. Before we get into lenses, let's cover some basics. Light, a form of electromagnetic radiation, can behave as both a wave and a particle. It is a speed of approximately three times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum, and it's basically the same in air. The energy of light is given by E equals H times F, where H is Planck's constant, and F is the frequency of light, and that would make E energy. In optics, we mainly consider light as a wave, particularly for phenomena like inferences, like interference and refraction. Lenses are curved optical devices that refract or bend light. They're characterized by their shape and the way they converge or diverge light. The strength of a lens is measured in something called a diop, which is calculated as P equals 1 over F, where F is the focal length of the lens. And there are two main types of lenses, and these are the only two you're responsible to know for the MCAT, converging and diverging lenses. Converging lenses, as seen on the left here, are the exact same thing as a convex lens. It'll bend light rays inwards, focusing them to a point. So we see all these different rays coming in, and they're all getting bent towards one point. That's what we mean when we say they converge. Think of like a magnifying glass out in the sun. You can make a point of light at the bottom on the concrete. From a medical standpoint, they're used to correct farsightedness. Diverging lenses are like concave lenses. They're going to spread right light rays outward. They're used to correct nearsightedness. The behavior of light rays as they pass through these lens is crucial for understanding how images are formed. But don't worry, we're gonna do some practice to make sure that this is all making sense. The key to understanding lenses lies in how they form images. The thin lens equation, one over DO plus one over DI equals one over focal length, where DO is the distance the object is. So in this case, I drew a little Christmas tree. It's the distance the object is from the lens, where DI is the distance the image is from the lens. And I didn't draw the Christmas tree upside down just to be quirky. This is literally what is going to happen with a convex lens. But it won't always happen with a convex lens. It depends on where it is with relation to these focal points, as we'll see in just a moment. Converging lenses are tricky because they can produce both real and virtual images, while diverging lenses only produce virtual images. This is something you will want in your Anki cards 100%. So what is a real image? A real image is formed when light rays actually converge, while a virtual image only appears where rays only seem to diverge from. So what a weird definition. Let me draw out what's happening. In the example above, we can figure this out by drawing a line from the tip of our tree with a zero degree inflection to lens. Then we draw another line going from there through the focal point. That's one line. And now we need a second line to figure out where things are converging. And for convex lenses, that is right through the center. So we draw that straight on through, and now we can see where our tree is. And because we have literal light all converging, we'd say this is a real image, but it's upside down. So we would call this a real inverted image. So what would a virtual image look like then? Well, this picture, there's a lot going on. So let's focus on just one thing at a time. Let's focus on the top here with these red lines. So this is a diverging lens. And like we said, these will all be virtual. So what we want to do is we find our Christmas tree. In this case, it's just an arrow. We go from the tip of the arrow straight, and now we diverge outwards. But we need to know how to do that. Well, that's where our focal length comes in. So we do a dashed line because this isn't literally happening. It's just a marker to get our angle. And now once we have our angle, we can take that to draw our line outwards. So this gives us one of our very important lines. Another key line is just like before. We just go from the tip straight on through. So that's a nice easy one to remember. And where what you'll notice is that's where our red converged. But it's not real. There's nothing on the right side. It's just these this dashed line is what's converging. So that means that this would be upright virtual because it doesn't exist here. 
It can't. Real images are inverted and can be projected onto a screen. They're formed by converging lenses when the object is outside the focal length. Virtual images, however, are upright and cannot be projected. They appear to be located behind the lens and are formed when an object is inside the focal length or converging lenses or at any position in a diverging lens. So let's see why this makes sense. Why are converging lenses so intense? We already showed you one far away. So let's say that now our object is within the focal length. So here's our focal length dots. And the focal length is determined by the mirror itself, by the diopter strength. So now we have our object right here. And if we do our trick before, we go right on through the circle. We go out. We try to go through the focal point. We say, hey, those are never going to converge for real. So then we do our dashed line technique, follow them all the way back. We say, oh, OK, so we use dashed lines. It's got to be a virtual image. And we see that the arrow is pointing up still. So we would call this an upright virtual image. If you want some more practice with this, I highly recommend pausing the video and just kind of think through logically all of these examples here. It's a really great resource. And if you're studying on your computer right now, this would be a great screenshot today to take to make into some Anki cards. But now I'm gonna make you do a little bit of practice here. A convex lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. An object is placed 30 centimeters from the lens. A convex lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. An object is placed 30 centimeters from the lens. Where is the image formed? And is it real or virtual? Take a few moments and try and draw this out. It's really helpful to draw it. Let's see here. First, I'm gonna draw a straight line. I can do better than that. So I'm gonna draw an even better straight line. Now I'm gonna draw my mirror. And I know it's convex, so I'm going to represent it as such. You know, our focal length is 10 centimeters. So let's say this is 10 centimeters out. And we know we're placing the object 30 centimeters out. So it's going to be about here. So I won't do a fancy Christmas tree. I'll do a boring arrow. So we know that this is 30 centimeters, which also is our DO. So now we can sketch out what's going on. So I didn't make my mirror quite big enough, but I know what should happen. This will go straight and then on through. It'll also go straight through here. So this gives us a rough approximation. So we see that we have a downward arrow and that everything is converging. So because they're converging, it is real. So this is a real inverted image. But we didn't exactly figure out where it is. So that's where our thin lens equation comes in. And let's take a look at what that was one more time. So DO plus one over DI equals one over F. So copy this so we can reference it nice and easily. And let's throw it in. So now we just have to plug in some numbers. So we figured out our DO is 30. We don't know our DI, so I'm just gonna call that X. And we know our focal length is 10. Solving for X, we figure out that X is 15, which makes sense. So then we know that the image is 15 centimeters away. Nice, hopefully that went well for you. But if it didn't, that's all right. We've got a redemption arc. Let's do one more. Let's say a concave lens has a focal length of 20 centimeters and an object is placed 10 centimeters from the lens. What is the nature of the image? Real, virtual, and what's the distance? And remember, this is a concave lens, not a convex lens. So just like before, we're going to draw a straight line. It starts nice and easy. I'm going to put my lens kind of in the middle, but this is a concave lens, which is a diverging lens. So hopefully you caught that. I'm going to do my best to draw a diverging lens there. Diverging will make things go away. So immediately we can say this is a virtual image. Don't need to do anything else to figure that one out because we have memorized it's virtual, but we'll prove it just in case. So let's say our focal length is here. This is 20 centimeters and the object is going to be halfway then at 10 centimeters. And let's assume that our object is right side up. So if we want to kind of visualize what's going on, we can draw out our light rays. Let's do the easy one first. Uh, it's going to go straight through the middle. We're also going to need our 20 centimeters over here so we can get our fancy line. So to do that one, we're going to go, oops, we're going to go straight into our lens. From there, we can line it up with our focal point on the left. I'm going to cheat using my iPad to draw a full line and then make it dashed. And the reason it's dashed is that this isn't actually happening. This is just to kind of get our bearings. And once we have that, we know it's going to continue diverging with that exact same angle. So we find where things meet. It's kind of in the middle here and it looks like we're still right side up. Okay. So we know we're virtual. 
It's a virtual image. We've also figured out we are right side up. And we can also visually see that it's reduced in size. Now let's plug in our equation from earlier. 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F to figure out how close our image is to the mirror. So we have 1 over 10 plus 1 over X equals 1 over 20. So now we'll solve for X, 1 over 20 minus 1 over 10. But I'm going to multiply both by 2. So minus 2 over 20 equals 1 over X. So now we have negative. 1 over 20 plus 1 over x. And you might be saying, well, why is it negative? And that's just because we're on the left side. So we could take the absolute value of that if we wanted to see exactly where we are. And that's a snapshot of how lenses work in optics. These principles are not just theoretical, they're the foundation for many technologies in medicine. If you've ever used a microscope, probably powered by these. It's very important for the chem phys section of the MCAT. You're likely to see anywhere from two to three questions on these. So if it didn't make sense, rewatch it. It'll make sense. Just give it a few times. If this is your first time seeing it. It can definitely be tricky. My biggest recommendation is just draw these out. It's going to make so much more sense. Thank you so much for watching our video, and I will see you next time.